changes. Please wear a mask and remember to scan the safe entry QR code at train stations and bus interchanges. Since the circuit breaker ended on the 1st of June, this has been a common sight across our public transport network at peak hours. Morning peak ridership on trains and buses has doubled, with authorities saying that safe distancing on public transport is almost impossible. One day before circuit breaker measures lifted, safe distancing stickers were removed from buses and trains. So if safe distancing is not possible, then how safe does that make our public transport system? To find out, in this episode of Talking Point, I'm braving the crowds and taking our public transport to look at what's being done to keep them germ-free and try to put our worries to rest. So far, there's been no conclusive evidence of public transport spreading COVID-19. Hard-hit cities such as Milan, which has reopened its transit systems, have not seen infection clusters emerge from public transport. Neither has Japan, which is some of the world's busiest rail networks. Still, countries aren't taking any chances and have responded with different strategies to manage risks. South Korea made wearing of masks compulsory on public transport to reduce the risk of a second wave of infection. In New South Wales, Australia, passengers on board buses are capped to 12 and trains to just 32 people. In Wuhan, China, the entire transport network was shut down for two months to curb the spread of the virus. While in Singapore, commuters have to wear a mask and avoid talking. So I have to admit that I haven't allowed my kids to take any public transport since the start of the outbreak. I guess I'm just fearful that they might come into contact with someone who is infected, especially during the peak hours. But I wonder if others feel the same too. So I actually created a poll on Instagram to get some reactions. Let's take a look at the results. Hmm. So about 100 people looked at my poll question and responded. And from that number, about 70% actually feel it's a valid concern. I want to know just how much of a risk we are taking whenever we take public transport. So I've arranged to meet with Dr. Leong Ho now. So how long have you had your cough? About two, three days. He's an expert in infectious diseases. What happens if we don't practice safe distancing while on public transport? What's the risk of the virus spreading? In a closed environment, because of air conditioning, then the risk of transmission goes up. The colder it is, the more likely you travel further, the more likely you linger in the environment or possibly even the air. For masks, it's only mild to moderate evidence that it actually works. That's because a lot of people don't wear it correctly and they do not cover the nose and they just cover the mouth. Okay. So if you think about it, the best way to prevent is actually safe distancing. So if safe distancing is so important, why don't we just limit the number of people going on our trains? If we control the number of people inside each train, then everyone will have their safe distancing. But what about the number of people on the platform? You'll create the traffic jam and the human traffic inside the platforms or outside the ticket gantry or outside the station. You're the same hordes of people. If we're not practicing safe distancing on these public transport systems and an infection does occur with someone, how big a cluster are we looking at here? The bulk of the patients will transmit only to two or three patients at most. But there are few individuals who have super spreading events, which means you can have the usual two to three cases. But suddenly, you will have one super spreader, one super spreading event, they'll hit many people on board the train and many people on board the bus. Wearing a mask and also telling people not to talk, use their phones while on public transport, is that good enough? If you actually wear a mask properly, science has shown it works beautifully. The trouble is people don't wear it correctly. Right. The poorer the compliance, the greater the virus will spread. If I'm wearing the mask correctly, and so is everybody yeah. else, even if I stand close to you, the risk is very, very small. If everyone sticks to this rule, 
we actually don't need the safe distancing. We'll be as good as 99.7% effective in preventing COVID spread. Wow, so if we all wear our masks properly, we actually don't need to safe distance. To wear a mask properly, the mask has to cover both the nose and mouth completely. According to Dr. Leong, if worn correctly, masks can protect users even if others around them talk. To ensure that commuters are wearing their masks in the right manner, about 500 transport ambassadors are deployed at stations and bus interchanges. Hi, Selena. I'm Hi, Stephen. Selena Lim has been a transport ambassador at Harbourfront Station for the past two months. What did you tell him? I just asked him to pull up the mask. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. He has it on, but just below the nose. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. It happens quite a lot, especially when you're on the phone. Right. Uncle, please, you can put your mask on. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So I've noticed that, well, everyone's wearing a mask, but some people are just not wearing it properly. That seems to be one of the more common occurrences or violations, so to yes. speak. Yes, that's correct. But it's not so much right now as compared to the start of Circuit Breaker. Since the safe distancing stickers were removed from our trains and buses, transport ambassadors no longer go on board trains to conduct checks. I want to know if commuters are still wearing their masks properly when nobody's watching. It's about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm going to get on one of our trains and observe if people are actually paying attention to the safety measures. Just had a half hour ride on the train and probably about 200 people on it. Of that number, I saw maybe two people who weren't really wearing their masks properly and maybe another five or six who were talking while on the trains. If safe distancing is impossible on public transport and a handful of passengers still do not wear their masks properly on trains, it's got to be bolstered with other measures like cleaning. But are the new cleaning regimes for our trains and buses good enough? These days, when I enter the train station or a bus interchange, I should check in by scanning the safe entry QR code. And you can find hand sanitizers wherever you go to help you keep your hands clean while on the move. And when it comes to cleaning at stations and interchanges, common touch points like gantries, escalators, rails, these are wiped down with disinfectant once every two hours. As for the interiors of trains and buses, Transport Minister Corbyn Wan has said that cleaning efforts are ramped up. I wonder what exactly does this enhanced cleaning regime look like? To start off, I'm going behind the scenes with our largest rail operator, SMRT. I'm joining the team of five to six cleaners to get this three-carriage train clean. Each cleaner is assigned the task of cleaning a specific touch point. Cleaners have less than 10 minutes to give the entire train a complete wipe down with disinfectant before the train picks up passengers for the next ride. I've been assigned the task of cleaning the side poles. Where's, that? Where's everybody gone? Well, <laughs> those guys are pretty fast. Let's go catch up with them. I've got to work a bit faster because you can see those guys are working really fast. And it's quite tough because the train just started moving. So you're having to clean as the train is moving so that, you know, you, you save some time. And this train is actually making a loop so the train has just pulled up at the station and in fact, they're getting passengers back in again. So that's why you got to clean super fast.
At some terminal stations like Harbourfront, the track works like a loop. Trains terminate at a platform before taking a U-turn to the opposite platform. This five to eight minute process of crossing over gives operators a window of opportunity to give some trains an extra clean during off-peak hours without affecting the frequency of service. For the safety of our commuters, you... I'm meeting Siu Yao Wee. He heads the team which implemented this additional step after Dosk on Orange was announced. Wow. Hey, hi, Steve. That was quite the workout. Wow, how was it? Wow, tiring, <laughs> I mean, is it? <laughs> yeah, and it happened so quickly. So they all went in and within that, you know, five to yes, eight minute yes, window, yes, they had yes. to clean the whole train. Yeah. How can they mm. ensure that the train is thoroughly clean? To do that, right, we actually have to uh, increase our cleaning manpower, probably about five to eight percent. But the main cleaning that we do, which is very thorough, is before we launch the train from the depot. And how is the cleaning at the depot different from the cleaning that is done here? So the main difference is that uh, in the depot, right, we have a longer time. So we withdraw our train probably in the night from uh, 10 to 12 onwards. And we have until 5 a.m. in the morning. This is a period whereby we put in our cleaner to clean thoroughly the entire train internal touch point. Yeah. And are you using the same sort of uh, you know, solution to disinfect the trains? Mm. So for those trains that we uh, disinfect inside the depot, right, we are using the antimicrobial that is uh, long-lasting. Self-disinfecting coating that destroys germs. Such on antimicrobial own. coatings are one. It's a physical rupture of the germs. Antimicrobial coatings are all the rage now. They are applied on areas like our HDB lift buttons and ATM machines. And during the circuit breaker period, they've been progressively applied to the interior of trains and buses. The antimicrobial coating works like a shield. When in contact with bacteria and viruses, it draws them in. The compounds puncture their membranes, killing them. By the 19th of June, the interiors of nearly all 3,500 SPS buses will be coated. Yo Siping has been seeing through the application of this coating since the end of May. I want to see for myself how this special coating is applied on our public transport. So I understand you also apply an antimicrobial coating on the surfaces now. Yes, yes. We are doing electrostatic uh, disinfectant coating or spray. So with that, I think maybe I invite you outside, you can have a better view of the spraying. So he's spraying it on now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How does it actually work? Okay, so what is uh, happening is that if you see the mist, it's a special disinfectant called SD Pro. It creates a layer that is bonded to the surface and it can last about 180 days. Yeah. Using the spray gun instead of simply wiping down surfaces allows for a more thorough application of the antimicrobial solution. How often would you apply this coating? We already plan to recoat in about six months. Uh, times because that is how long it will last. But obviously, because we are now still uh, doing testing and measurement every month, if we feel that its effect has uh, gone down, we, we can always do it uh, faster than six months. Would you like to give it a try, some hands on? Okay, sure. Why not? Let's go. This antimicrobial coating sounds like the perfect antidote for trains and buses that can be a hotbed of viruses. But can they really keep our public transport free of COVID-19? I run a test to find out. 36 swabs, 9 buses, over 2 days. How effective is the antimicrobial coating? Studies have suggested that COVID-19 can last on different types of surfaces for a long time. On plastic and stainless steel, it can last about three days. On glass, up to four days. So if our buses and trains are cleaned daily and sprayed with an additional self-disinfecting antimicrobial coating, that should mean the cleaning's got us covered, right? 
for some answers, I'm meeting Dr. Thomas Tay from JMET Guard, one of the companies that produces antimicrobial coatings. He's the man in charge of developing these products. So will this coating give us 100% protection against the COVID virus? I think the coating has its limitations. Uh, it, it's not something which uh, is foolproof because what if some somebody were to soil the surface uh, during their trip, they are actually blocking the surface uh, coating from acting against these uh, viruses or bacteria. Take for example, if you were to touch the surface with a dirty pair of hands, say you have some um, chocolate stains on your hands and mm. your child just touches the grand pole, that will actually invite viruses or bacteria. If you don't wipe it off, you'll just remain there. Or imagine yourself uh, in, a, in a bus with your grab post, people boarding the bus, holding the grab post with their hands, maybe some wearing rings or holding something, a hard object. They will definitely scratch off the coating and uh, the coating will not last in these surfaces for that period of time. Somebody comes in who's infected, they soil the surface with the virus, mm -hmm. I come on the bus, I hold the handrail, I scratch my nose, yep. game over. Game over. In other words, if we soil or scratch the antimicrobial coating, it can't reach the virus and can't kill it. Which is why the antimicrobial coating must go hand in hand with an enhanced cleaning regime. Given the limitations of the antimicrobial coating, I'm worried about how effective it is in keeping our trains and buses COVID-free. So I've decided to put the coating to the test. Since the coating is still being progressively applied on all our trains and buses, I'm zeroing in on those which I know have been treated, thanks to these stickers plastered on some SBS buses. Thomas and I are collecting samples from some of the most common touch points over the course of two days, during both peak and non-peak hours. We're swabbing poles, handles, buttons and windows. The swab samples are immediately run through an adenosine triphosphate test or what's commonly known in the industry as the ATP test. ATP is a molecule that carries energy within living cells. Its measurement is RLU, relative light units. The higher the RLU, the more the volume of microorganisms found on a surface. While it cannot directly identify if there are traces of coronavirus, the microorganisms count works as a proxy. The lower the amount of microorganisms, the less likelihood there is for the coronavirus to be found on the surface. 36 swabs, 9 buses over 2 days. My question is, how effective is the antimicrobial coating in keeping our public transport system clean? I have good news for you. Oh, yeah? Definitely. Okay. Uh, because from the results, we see that majority of the surfaces are actually uh, in the passing range uh, for the ATP results that we gathered. Wow, okay, okay. Mm. How does that range work? So in a typical setting, um, under 80 will be considered clean. Mm -hmm. Whereas, let's say you have a reading yeah. of uh, from 80 to 200, it's considered a cautionary uh, kind of reading. Above 200 will be considered dirty, and so we need to increase the frequency of cleaning as there okay. are increased risks of contamination from disease-causing microorganisms. These levels are based on our device manufacturer's uh, right. recommendation. So what were the results like? We did an average of uh, the ATP readings. So for the bus stop buttons, we saw that it was around 20 plus. And for the bus windows, we see around 20. And same goes for the bus hang handles, we saw about uh, 20 as well. Which means that those are pretty clean services, Those are pretty right? clean. Less than 30, in fact, would be what the healthcare uh, hospitals, they are looking at uh, as a clean uh, benchmark. But if you talk about the bus grab poles, right? Wow, those are that. much higher than the rest of the surfaces and they are measuring about 100 RLU. It's in the cautionary range that we should probably do something about that surface. That's almost five times more than the other parts of the bus. Yep. You have to hold on to these surfaces to stabilise yourself on the bus and definitely the frequency of touch there will be higher and also the chances of wearing these coating on, of these surfaces are also higher. So any antimicrobial coating that may be there may lose its effectiveness over time. Some parts may need to be coated more frequently. 
Definitely. So um, this is something which we should um, continuously monitor. So to say that this coating can last 180 days for all surfaces would be incorrect actually. For high touch surfaces, for high wear surfaces, I wouldn't expect it to last that long. So how worried should I be about touching the grab poles in the bus? It's well below the 200 uh, mark where we say this surface is dirty. So let me give you an example. So the touch screen on your phone, right, measures about 500 to 1000. Oh, you? okay. So mm -hmm. now, now you got me more worried. Right? I mean, I'm more scared of my phone so, than I am of the, the bus pole. Exactly. So you compare a phone surface which you have to touch, we probably still uh, shouldn't be that fearful of the grab pole. We're actually going back to phase two tomorrow. Is what we're doing now good enough to keep us safe in phase two? So with phase two coming in, definitely the readings will be higher if you were to do the same measurements there and then. But you cannot get away with touching these surfaces. You have to use the grab pole, you have to use the handle. Although the operators are doing their best to do the coating, the um, daily disinfection, but we really as individuals should keep up with our personal hygiene. I think that's the best way we should be carrying it forward. For now, many of us will still have to take public transport daily. And if safe distancing is not possible, and cleaning regimes are effective but yet not foolproof, then I think I also need to do my part to help keep our public transport system safe. Perhaps one way is to not touch anything at all by going on a contactless journey. First up, mask on. Worn properly, of course. And you can also use a face shield. Now this will keep you from unconsciously touching your face. Next up, the fair gate. And I get through using the e-wallet on my phone. And if you're worried about those elevator buttons, you can be extra safe by getting one of these hygiene hooks. And to avoid contact with the seats, I'm going to choose to stand throughout this journey. And of course, once you finish your trip, don't forget to sanitize those hands.